Hello! This video will contain spoilers for Sly 4 Thieves in Time and rather eerie imagery. If you are intending to play the game or have not finished the fourth level, then don't play the video. You have been warned. Hello, my good friends. Th this is Cooper Galaxy 3 for your little treat Halloween video. And this is Skiffy Kitten, who is going to assist you on this very spooky journey. And we're going to discuss something interesting we noticed ever since we finished Life 4. It's going to regard the Black Knight, otherwise known as our dear Penelope, who went from this rather sweet mechanic into um, a rather power-crazy black clad dictator. Alright. I know this this form of, of allegory in the medieval level in Sci-4 because think about it. Who was the antagonist of this level? The Black Knight, otherwise known as our dear Penelope. I can't help but notice that after playing the game, I ask myself why was she in medieval level? Because other than the explanation she gave to Bentley during the boss battle, she could it could have been for any other reason. Maybe she could have been in the last level to make the twist more dramatic. But this ha it has to be this level in particular. Then I kind of realize something. First, she's a mouse in medieval England. She's also clad in black, hence to also a reference from Sly 3 where she was the Black Baron. Now she's the Black Knight. Coincidence? I think not. She she dictated a, a small village, surrounding it with robot guards and hired many others. She may have killed or injured a lot of knights. It's funny, I wonder if anybody has actually ever considered that. Like, the reason why Galath took her on single-handed before he got captured. What happened to all the other knights? Did they die? Did they run off? They never explained that. I'm a bit worried. <laughs> I'm guessing that it's not the missile that killed them, but the aftermath. To which, speaking of aftermath, she she calls her knight, uh, she calls herself the Black Tyrant, and let's not forget, she also had mouse troopers. Well, this goes for almost every villain in the game, but let's talk about her in particular. Well, it's just I do I do know what you're getting at because it's the history history of Europe. Um, there was a thing that went round uh, years ago in like 1300s called uh, the bubonic plague and it was actually spread by rats coming into the docks from ships from abroad. And considering them, there are mice and rats hanging around medieval England, um, it's kind of mixed in there, isn't it? It does. It, I mean, it, it's, it sounds way too... It sounds way too coincidental for just uh, for just a formerly good character to make a face heel turn and then turn bad. There has to be more than that. That sounds oddly like a metaphor or an allegory of the Black Plague, the worst pandemic in the history of Europe. Mm, it was it was really bad. I mean, I don't want to go into any gory details, but the symptoms were really really bad. Oh my god! Keep, I, I, keep the gory details, girl. That is Halloween. Oh, that's true. Um, well, you'd get very sick, you would bleed, you would get whew, really big black boils on your armpits in particular, which is where the black, this is where the term, uh, the other name, the Black Death came from, because it was black boils that would burst, and, well, they'd be part of the responsible reason as to why you died, because it would it'd result in massive blood loss. Because that was your blood and pus filling up inside there. And if it burst, massive blood loss. And remember, this was back in the 1300s before we could save lives from things like this. Those little cues gave me quite an impression that this could be a joke or a reference in this time in history. The way it was presented, how her appeal is black, what she did in Europe, and not to mention her own species was put together to look as such. No, I mean, yeah, it's very, uh, it is very clever how they mix that in. I do wonder, uh, as you say, was that the creator's intention? If it was, it was very clever fitting, and they probably wondered themselves, how many people are going to get this? And if you're the first, you're the first, it makes you a deep thinker, and that's really good. But I wonder, I wonder if they did though. It's really, it does make me, it does make you think though, doesn't it? It's, I'm not sure it was the true intentions. 
but before any you know any furries or people from Tumblr think so, I don't think she caused the plague or had anything to do with the Adelby species. But the eerie thing, it was more of a metaphorical plague, like the black boils. It could be her armor, or it could be her soul, or her personality turning black. Maybe maybe it's the who knows? Maybe her attack on these knights could represent how many, how much of the plague targets people, and and her mouse troopers could be the ones spreading the chaos. And at the time, because of these, of of this plague of rats, it was like almost an apocalypse for people at the time. Before this disease just went away. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. That's that, that's 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 a possibility. You're probably right though, I mean, if it was the writer's intention, good on them. If it wasn't, that's cool too, it's just it's just people having their own ideas and such. But, in a way, it's, it is kind of like a metaphor. I mean, it's like that Nostalgia Critic, when he mentioned about um, the bee themes from The Secret of Nimview. Um, you don't, he had no idea if that was their original intention either, so... I think a lot of things in media have mixed messages about what the original intention of the writers were, but only they know for sure, and unless you can ask them that, you never know. But I think what keeps us going is our assumptions, and it gives our imagination fuel. Oh definitely, and that's what, I think that was the intention. I mean, as much as I hated that twist, it was really something to think about, because this totally gets out of our comfort zone of a possible happy ending. Don't get us wrong, we always want happy endings. And we always want our characters kept the way it is, but some things just happens when we don't we least expect it. And it's like, and this is all you can think of. Like, maybe this is how I'm going to get some answers. Maybe that's my light at the end of the tunnel, rather than me complaining of how much this piece of writing sucked. But as much it sucked, it could be for an even bigger adventure or something more than more for us, the players, to think about. And that's how many yeah. of the text and literary you know, concept just comes from because of everything we've just been thinking about and how we can make do of it. Yeah, I agree. I completely agree. Because <laughs> I'll, because uh, it's like, like I say, it's it's good to think things over for yourself. Because, like, uh, like I say as well, uh, you never know what their actual intention was unless you actually spoke to them. But you know, whether it was intended or not, in one way, it's. Still, quite a bit of a surprising twist, to be honest, and I'll, and I do agree with you when you say it's not a favourite twist because this character was nice. There was no way I could have imagined her turning on them, especially seeing how she was in Sly Three. I couldn't have seen that coming. Nobody could have, because she was sweet, she was cute, she became Bentley's girlfriend. What good reason would she have to do that? And if I'm honest. I don't think the game had a good enough reason for it. They could have, if they wanted to turn her into a villain, they could have come up with at least a better reason. But considering there's hints of her return in the next Sly game, hopefully there'll be some kind of redemption involved. There, yeah. I remember um, the fanfic of her. She was like fooling around with the clockwork eye, and this thing happened. If she became like a bigger villain than we, then we got something else in our hands. Yeah, that's true. Um, but you know, Sly Falls still my favorite in the Sly series. Okay, people who turn around and going boo, I don't like Sly Fall. Well, you don't like Sly Fall. I've got nothing against you. But just keep an open mind that a lot of people do like Sly Fall, including myself. And Jay as well, I believe. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice change. Everything I've been waiting for for the past eight years. And it's here. That's not expected, but it still provides everything. And it just provides more than what we just saw in the story. It really, and it really brings up all kinds of theories like the one we kept, like the one we just discussed. I mean, who knows? It could be more than what we think. Maybe there's, uh, maybe there's a bigger storyline underneath. The original maybe we're looking for a theme or we're gonna look i don't know 
We don't know what's going to happen. We don't know what's what's going to come up. Well, I think probably uh, probably the best thing we could hope for is that she does return to the team again and makes it up. But obviously, there's going to be a lot of trust exercises involved after that. But the fact that she did what she did seems to make her a tad more interesting. It kind of opened her character up a bit more. But I did prefer her when she was a good guy. She could still be doing what she did in Sly 4, but for the Cooper gang, you know? What's wrong with doing that? So I bet she could. I was just going to mention that Clockwork, the villain Clockwork, is an enigmatic character. Even though there's not much personality to him, he's still a villain that a lot of people really like because he did a lot of bad shit back in the day. And Penelope is a new villain and she used to work with them. So I guess betrayal was the next logical step for Sanzaru to do with a character who they thought they could trust. But I think they could trust her again. Speaking of betrayal, I kind of noticed just like an Adam Eve sort of vibe from the game. But I think I'll save it for another occasion since I don't think this could be relevant to this allegory but relevant to something else if you know what I mean. And knowing some people who may feel about it, I think I'll stop right here. Okay, um, that wraps up your Halloween treat for this year. Maybe next year we could come up with another creepypasta too. Maybe Sly related, maybe not. But you never know. If you liked it, thank you very much. So, happy Halloween everybody, I guess. <laughs> not much more for me to say. Yeah. Yeah, I like to thank Skiffy Kitten to help me out with with this recording. I'm having some bad luck with my own recording program and she was here to help me out with it and I really appreciate that. It's no problem, I'll do it any time. Okay, so this has been Skiffy Kitten and... Gas 33 with my first little spooky ready. Not as creepy as Mr. Creepypasta, it's based but some face just my own little treat for this special occasion. Yep, and we shall see you soon. <laughs>